hoping in the promises of God. The psalmist says something beautiful. Since I was born and now I am old, I have never seen God fail. And you know, there are so many beautiful scriptures around having hope in God and how faithful he is. There's a scripture that says that the lions will lack food and lack what to eat. But when it comes to God's children, they will never see lack. They will not even hear of lack because who is their provider? God, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, I want to talk about this so that you get to know what are these promises that God has made and what are the myths we've been having about God's promises. Number one thing I want to point out is that God did not promise to pull you out of every adversity, but he sure promised to take you through it. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that alone explains it. Though I walk through the Red Sea, they walk through. They did not get stuck, but they walk through. So all these are examples of the faithfulness of God, that God has carried people through things, through problems, through afflictions. Yeah, these things are not palatable, but then hoping in God will take you through these things in victory. Because hope is a beautiful word in the scripture that talks about the positive and confident expectation of good from God. It is not a wishful thinking, oh, I wish, I hope that God would come true, but it is a thinking based on faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, which is a substance of having a positive and confident expectation of good from God, that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it is for you to know, God may not take me out of the affliction, out of the trouble. He may not pull me out of the adversity, but he will walk me through it. And that is the promise of God, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be with you. You you need to keep that close to your heart. No matter what you're going through right now, the devil is always going to whisper to your ears that God has left you. It's, the devil is always going to whisper to your ears that God is not for you. And this is a place to remind yourself. Scripture says that in the valley of trouble, God will give you a door of hope. When you bank your mind on God's promises, which is you have a reservoir of scripture in your heart. You read the word of God and believe it. Really believe it. Not read it like a story. It is really going to help you so that in the day that you feel like things are not working. That you feel like I may quit. You know that God is still with you. That the adversity, it did not say that you will never experience any. But he said you will walk you through it. Number two, God promised you strength. He said, that he will be your strength. David said in Psalms, you are my strength and my rock. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Did that mean that he did not go through things? He went through things. Of course, we is strength tested in the battlefield. Strength is not tested on the bed. When you're just lying down, oh, breakfast on bed, oh, good thing beautiful thing there are times for that there is time for everything and ecclesiastes tells us about life on earth that there are beautiful times that are going to be joyful and cheerful times he said in those times of course you're going to rejoice but in the times that things are not going so well in the times that you are having some battle here and there those are times to sit down and think. Those are times that you can have deep thought. Those are times that you can forge ahead. And that shows strength. Of course, scripture says in Proverbs 24, 10, He that faints in the day of adversity has but small strength. If the Lord is your strength, there is no way you can have small strength. It is only when you forsake your strength that you're going to be void of strength. If the Lord is your strength, you should hold on to the Lord in the day of the battle, in the battlefield, in every step of the way, because with him there is no impossibility. Number three, I've said it before, but I'm just going to repeat this. God promised to be with you. He did not promise that nothing 
is going to go wrong. But he promised to be with you. For him to promise to be with you, it means there are going to be things that are going to happen that are against you. But because he promised to be with you, scriptures in Romans says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And it says, what shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Shall tribulation, shall this, shall that, shall hunger, shall quarrel. Like it mentioned these things in Romans chapter 8. And it says, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Throw him who loved us. He is with you because he loves you. So if you have ever felt a sensation like God doesn't love you or God doesn't care about you, he says that he cares for you. You should bring your request and your case to him. Do not assume that you can take care of it. Do not assume that it's too small to bring it to him. Do not assume that you don't want to disturb him. He is your love. He loves you and he cares for you. It is just an example of even us as humans. You love someone and you really want them to be at peace. Because when they are not at peace, you are not at peace. You really want them to be okay. So that is why if they don't bring their problems to you and you really love them, it's good to frustrate you. In a way, like talking about being a human being and you really love someone. You really want to be there, you want to be involved, you want to know, okay, what can I do? How can I be present here? Because you, there is love and God really loves you. And he says, I am with you. So why are you acting like you are alone in this? You're not alone. And this is what you need to know. In Genesis 39 verse 21, it talked about Joseph in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. This is the power of having God on your side. This is the power of having God with you. Nobody can be against you. Even if they act against you, they are not really against you. They, are, they may just be jealous. Or maybe they are feeling inferior. They are, they are struggling with their insecurities. They are not really against you. They cannot be. Because if they could have been, they would have already dealt with you before you could even know. So God is with you. Number four is that God promised that the weapons will not succeed. God did not promise that the weapons will not be formed. And this is where even myself, I used to make mistakes because I thought that when there is a weapon formed against me or when I'm up against some, you know, hurdle or some limitation, I feel like, God, why? Why? Start like, <laughs> and God is like, I did not promise you that the weapons will not be formed. In fact, scripture says, indeed, which is definitely, they shall surely assemble. But not because of me. I did not send them. I didn't ask them. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. That's Isaiah 54 verse 15. Then it goes to verse 17. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, you need to understand this very well. Formed against you. Hey, it means it is customized for you. It is built based on your model of life. It is built based on your lifestyle. It is built based on how you walk, the route you take, and everything you do. Mm. Customized weapon. So it didn't mean that it would not like be formed. It didn't mean that they would not try something. It didn't mean that they would not come up against you. But God is saying, they will. Definitely they will. They will gather. The weapon will be formed but it shall not prosper. Its intended purpose will not have effect in your life. They cannot take you out. Amen. And I want you to believe this, that God is with you. And because of this, the weapons cannot prosper. And it says, every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You shall condemn. You have the authority to condemn the tongues. When the weapons are formed against you, it is not the time to cry. It is not the time to run to hide. It is the time to stand up because you have strength in the Lord. The Lord is your strength. It is the time to rise up and say, all these tongues that are against me, all these tongues of negativity against me, I condemn you, which is you condemn them. So 
This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. You have to also understand this last verse. It is like the key point of knowing that you must know that God is on your side. You must know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You don't have your own righteousness. If you don't feel like God has forgiven you, if you don't feel like God is on your side, if you don't feel like you are even okay with God to start with, how are you going to stand up and condemn the tongues that are against you? Instead of condemning, you might end up conforming and accepting what they are saying against you. But in truth, from the scripture, your righteousness is not of yourself. And I will make a longer video about knowing your righteousness. It is not you. It is God's righteousness. You are justified by faith, by believing in what Christ has done. Every weapon formed against you, no matter how it was formed, it shall not prosper. And this is the promise of God. You need to have hope in the promises of God for you. Whenever you go through the Bible, believe every promise of God that it is yours to take. Amen. I am OM. This is my YouTube channel. I hope this video has inspired you and is a blessing to you. Let me know in the comment section how this video has spoken to you. And do not forget to hit the subscribe button. It is free. You're not subscribing with money. And hit the like button also. And then share this video to someone that needs to be encouraged. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you in my next YouTube video. <laughs> Bye.